in the base. You know what I mean? Right. So a snap throw to first, you know, the guy's only, you know, what, 11 feet off the base, but a snap throw to second, right. the guy might be 20. It, it's it's a little bit, it's a little more understanding if, you know, J.A. Happ had, uh, had turned around and and gotten him from the pitcher's mound to second. I think, I think what's really getting five-minute professor's goat here is that the amount of time it takes for the catcher to get to, to second, you should have enough time to get back to the base. Maybe, you know, have a good bite of the three musketeers bar that you brought with you, you know, to second and, and, you know, just enjoy that while the ball's getting over there. You um, should be standing up when you get back to the base on that throw. You shouldn't be <laughs> on the ground. You should have been there. You should watch the, the fielder catch the ball and you should say, good try. That's what you're supposed to do if you're on second base. So basically, this has turned into now Eduardo Nunez sucks, the fantasy baseball podcast with Doug Boyle. If any, if, any, if, any, if anyone knows Eduardo Nunez or uh, or Eduardo's mother, if you could send out a copy of this to them, I think it'll it'll go. He has he has actually apologized. He said it was a rookie mistake. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, this is the kind of rookie mistake which gets you sent down. <laughs> Do you know one thing that we're really, really, really bad at, and, and as as the uh, eponymous like leader of this group, I take full responsibility. We're really bad at transitioning. Well, that's not really true at all, because uh, I want you to know that you're a good. You do a good job of getting us back to focus, because you you make this great schedule for what we're going to talk about, and the next thing you want us to talk about, Nunez is actually. On the all-star ballot. And well, if he we, gets one vote, I'm going to protest the entire system. Well, maybe Gary Sanchez <laughs> will vote for him. You know? I, I'll i tell you what. I voted for Gary Sanchez for catcher. Uh, Not you, just because of that, but because all the catchers suck. We we, 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 hit, we, <laughs> we, we, we hit the, 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 the third of the way through the season point, which made me think after last week's show that, you know, it's like there's that great saying that says everybody wins 54, everybody loses 54. It's what you do with the 54 in the middle that are okay, with the exception of Baltimore Orioles. They sometimes lose more than that. The, <laughs> the It's like, so I said, let's recap this thing. And then the, the All-Star Belt comes out and it's like, well, what better way, what better functionality to recap the guys that have been good the the voting is different this year. Do you know the rules on the voting? I do. I I, I don't. Give me a, a refresher on the new rules. I didn't know that they changed but, anything. Yeah, no, before you used to like everybody would vote for everybody at one time, and the, then you'd have like this fifth man at the end, like this last vote. You're not gonna do that anymore. Right now, you get to you get to do up to five votes a day, like unlimited voting from here until until about a week beforehand. They're gonna stop it, and. The top three people are going to go into like they're going to go into another election for the, during the last week. So like this is actually like the primary, and then there's going to be a finalist, which which is great for uh, I think for the agents of baseball because now when they're talking about how great their player is, they they don't have to say they don't have to rely on hey my guy was an all star. They can say my guy was an all star finalist. They got one more lot. It's like being second team all American. It's still something, right? But anyway, there should be a lot of there should be a lot of juice about the last week of voting, and in the last week of voting, you can only do one vote at a time. Right. So I think I think it's going to be kind of exciting. It's rare to, that the leaders of baseball do things that I think are good. So, like decades after we get canceled, and you know we're we're you know in our in our twilight years, you'll know that I've either passed on, or have, have no longer of sound mind. When you realize that there's no longer a write-in vote for Bronson Arroyo, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually one thing I did in the ballot real well. Before I used to have to, I used to have to write in like you had to, like come up with a player, but now like if you put something in the write-in player, it'll actually pop up that guy. I did because I, I don't believe the DH uh, for a decade. I I wrote in uh, Betty White for DH in the national in the American League because I'd like to see that, but I stopped, I stopped the Betty White for DH thing. A while back. So, is there anything that you find interesting? Or should we go through this position by position? Or should we... I got an idea. Well, I, I have a different I, I have a different question before we start going through this. Have you ever considered this? Like, I'm an, I'm an American League guy. So, now that there's a, there's a consequence to who wins, do you ever think about voting for 
marginal players in the National League for each position with the hopes that they will field a worse team. Is there a consequence for it? I don't know that. I thought they took that away. There, There isn't, like, that home field advantage. You know what I, you know what I do think along the same lines? It's like I, I look at this, and I'm a Cubs fan, and I make no bones about it, and I see I see Wilson Contreras' name on there, and I see Javi Baez's name on there, and I see, I see Chris Bryant's name on it there, and... When I was a kid, I would vote for Cubs even if their name was Barry Foote and Manny Trio. It didn't matter who they were. But now I look at those guys going, I think there's a good argument that Chris Bryant's the best third baseman. And there's a good argument that Anthony Rizzo's the best first baseman. And I'm certain that Wilson Contreras is the best catcher. I want them to not win so they get the week off. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm going, please don't put my guys in the All-Star game. Please, please, please. Like, you know one thing that they changed? Another thing in the ruling is that the uh, the managers no longer pick the pitchers because managers were, were sitting there going like like if you were the Yankees manager you're like well I'm gonna pick a couple guys off the Red Sox staff to make them wear themselves out a little bit you know mm-hmm. so the league office is gonna pick the pick the pitching staff now because of that little that little uh, I, I wouldn't say cheating but it's a little that little of uh, pushing the envelope on what the rules were meant to do the competitive edge that being selected provides the competitive edge of being selected. so it's like is i think there's a couple of no-brainers like how could you not vote for the big three bets well it's like 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 the the big three from this year are uh, the guys just having phenomenal years in the national league are josh bell cody bellinger and christian yelich did, did, did we all vote for those guys if we were voting I did vote for all of them. Yeah, yeah, you got to vote. You got to put those guys in. And so, so you know, there's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of talk there. I mean, you can you could talk about. Uh, I, I don't know. It's like I, I don't know how you could not vote for. Uh, well, Freddie. So, if... I, I still want to talk a little bit psychologically, though. Okay. Um, it, because the All Star Game is played halfway through the season, so in Roughly. my mind, it's the last half of last year. And the first half of this year. Because right. you, you, your second half of last year, that no one no one had the opportunity to recognize you for that. So you have to kind of add that into your head, I think, when I think when you're voting, that you need to be thinking about the fact that, you know, a really great performance last year still needs to be recognized this year, even if they're not doing well, because Josh Bell could you know, play his last game in July this year. So there is, like, two philosophical concepts. Like, one is, like, you want the superstars to be there, and then there's also the concept of, like, rewarding the guys that are being great this year. And so you do have at first base, like, if you didn't vote for Josh Bell, I can understand somebody voting for, for Paul Goldschmidt because he had a great end of last year, and he's been historically the starting first baseman for the National League. But what Bell has done has been so impressive that it's hard for me to overcome that. But if somebody voted for Goldschmidt, I wouldn't have a problem with that. If somebody voted for, you know, Joey Votto or for Max Muncy, I'd go, you know. <laughs> oh but, yeah, v- Votto but, definitely is warranted. I mean, he's killing it. The uh, the uh, speaking of your same thing, like who, uh, Professor? Who did you vote for for the American League second baseman? I found this one to be curious because it seemed to me like nobody here really stands out. You know who I chose? A man with 10 home runs, 27 RBIs, and an 853 OPS. There are three different Michael ways you can go Chavis. about this. You can, you can go, you can vote, you can vote. A for rookie, the, Michael Chavis. You can vote for the best player, you know, historically, which would be Jose Altuve, which is hard to, considering he's both injured and he hasn't really been that great to start the season. You can vote for the guy who's having the best year this year, which which might be, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I'd actually say Tommy LaStella. You know, but LeMahieu maybe, you know, or you could be a complete and utter homer and just pick your guys off your team. And no, no, I mean, this is not this is not a just a complete and utter homer. He he's he's as good as Tommy LaStella. He's as good as Le, uh, LeMahieu's being yeah, this year. I mean, are you, are you really sure about that? Do you think there's anybody who's really as good as Tommy LaStella? <laughs> I think. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think. I think you also need to – we ought to throw in Brandon Lowe in there for the race. He's came out of nowhere and had a 
35 RBIs at this point, you know? I mean, I mean, my, my, yeah, I, there are some guys there that are pretty decent guys. And Brandon Lowe had, has had a really nice rookie season after getting the signing. Just These guys don't jump out at me the way, like, like the old All-Stars did. Like, I don't see one of these guys as being the superstar with the exception of, of Jose Altuve. It's hard not to put Jose Altuve in the belt. If, like, if you looked at the American League first base situation, right? It's like... He doesn't deserve it, Miguel Cabrera, but like Miguel Cabrera is the guy I'm supposed to be voting for there. Why not who, Carlos Santana? Who did you guys who did you guys market first in American League? Carlos Santana. Santana. I voted for CJ Crone cuz I have I've been a I've been touting CJ Crone as a baseball player in the fantasy stuff for about two and a half years now. And I, I have I have a, 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 a what's that called a, a bias bias like you know, it's I'm biased toward him. He's having a nice year. Yeah, Santana's actually having kind of a miraculous year. I, I didn't realize he was that he was having that good of a year because to me, he's always he's always he's never really been that good of a player. It's like he seems. So to what have you're a, doing is you're not even looking at what they're doing. You're saying I know historically he's not that good, so therefore he can't be good this year. I you're a the, son the, of a bitch. The first time yeah, I looked at him. <laughs> The, the first time Doug, down, you're supposed to be the statesman here. You got you got to be be taking this with some stats behind it instead of you no. Know, the, stat, the, 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 the stats are I don't I, I generally don't like players that are two twenty two thirty hitters. It just so happens that this year Carl Santana is not hitting two thirty, I mean, which like, is what you're talking about here. We're voting for this year. We're not voting for nineteen ninety eight. So well, so, that's a problem I think with with the fan voting. I've I've, I've always said it's like. You you get these na- people voting on name and not on the actual stats, which is which. I mean, you know, Crone CJ Crone has hit two seventy with thirteen home runs, thirty five RBIs, eight six six OPS. He's having a good enough year to be a solid vote. No, I I agree. I'd probably it'd be, for me it'd be between Crone and Luke Voigt as I, as far. I, I as think that like, Crone Crone deserves first base more than Michael Chavez deserves second. No one deserves second base more than Michael Chavez. Zero people. The yeah, only reason the Red Sox have any wins this year is because of Michael Chavez. <laughs> Michael Chavez. Who did I've you already down? voted for him twice for MVP. You, voted twice. <laughs> you guys like the, the American League better, so who'd you guys vote for a shortstop at second base? A shortstop in the American League. You, know, you, what, you mentioned this, though, I, I think a little bit, uh, in that at first base, nobody's jumping out at me. I mean, really, nobody's jumping out. And I said, Carlos Santana's doing a pretty good job, and I got to see him just, just earlier this week playing against the Sox. Um, I feel the same way about shortstop. I don't think anybody's jumping out at shortstop, so the, I went the, the, the with problem, my guy, Xander. The problem with shortstop is that the, these guys should be jumping out at us. I mean, like, we're, we were told— I think first base, somebody should be jumping out. No, I mean— so like, should have 15 home runs at first base. In the, Amer- in the American League, you have Francisco Lindor, you have— uh... Uh, uh, Carlos Correa, is there another guy? And Xander Bogart. It's like those are the three guys people are telling us are awesome, and they're going to be like you know the future of baseball. And they're out there. In reality, on the field, the two best guys this year have been Jorge Polanco and Alberto Mondesi. I voted for Alberto Mondesi. Well, yeah, screw I'd, you. You I'd, didn't I'd vote, vote for Carlos Mondesi. Santana. I don't care. <laughs> I'd definitely yeah. be voting for Bondesi as well for a shortstop in the American League. I mean, he's leading the the league in RBIs at 42, 20 stolen bases. I mean, he's yeah, well, definitely, definitely that, he's no he, he has no doubt the fantasy and the second baseman. If this was a fantasy All Star team, it'd be Alberto Mondesi. I'm pretty sure he's the the true the true All Star. But Jorge Polanco with that you know thousand OPS and a three thirty eight batting average, like that that's pretty much a breakout year on a team that is really being pushed forward a lot because this guy is this guy is that good you know you're kind of splitting hairs here because Xander Bogarts is not doing badly he is batting 292 and he had a slow start and he's got 37 RBIs well I mean, I mean Francis Linder is batting 282 with 20 RBIs yeah. you know that's not horrible you know uh, yeah, but it's, Carlos it's... Correa is hitting 295 11 home runs that's not horrible but for some reason like you're those are guys that we had ex- expectations you know, Francisco Lindor, if it wasn't for the injury, would have been a top five pick in everybody's fantasy draft. Uh, you know, Correa was in consideration to be in the first round. You know, but he went a little bit. It went a bit later. These are guys that are supposed to be super superstars. And and you just said it when you started this. It's like 
the mar- those guys kind of were blah to you, they shouldn't be. It's not like, we, like you look... Okay, but you, you can't punish everybody because nobody's standing out. 